What is going on, everybody? Jim here with another audiobook review today, talking about book number two in the Dresden Files called Full Moon. Um, a lot of same problems as the first one. Um, definitely a weaker story overall, and I'll get into a lot of that, but I want to first say that um, really enjoying audiobooks. If you were like me prior to meeting my boy Big C, that I talked a lot about in the first episode. Um, I recommend you check them out. They're actually a lot of fun. I'm getting them from the library on the free. Um, you got about three weeks to do it. They're not bad. You could put an hour or two away a day easily, driving to work, or for me, playing video games, or even maybe during work when it's a quiet time and you're just catching up on emails or reading something. I don't know. But... I have been enjoying audiobooks and I'm glad that I'm being exposed to some really cool stories in some cool worlds that I probably wouldn't have ever read. So check them out. They're actually really, really cool. Dresden Files, book two. A lot of same problems, like I said, as the first one. The audio quality continues to be poor. James Marsters, a phenomenal narrator. Um, Plagued with more technical problems this time, shockingly, than the first book I read. You would think that by the time they got into book two, maybe they're starting to find their stride and how they wanted him to read things, maybe how he would narrate, maybe how they would cut up the, the segments. Nope. No to any of those things. He is still a very wet narrator. There's still a lot of slurping and gurgling and swallowing and you can hear him gulping back some of the spittle that is building up as he is reading, um, which again is good and bad. If the main character, uh, Harry Dresden, was an old guy, this would make sense. And the best way I can explain that is think of like Johnny Cash. Think of old Johnny Cash. Think of when Johnny Cash covered Hurt towards the end of his career or Rusty Cage towards the end of his career. And he had that old man mouth, but it worked because a lot of those songs were reflective of, of you know, looking back on his life and thinking about, um, you know, a younger, a younger version of himself, right? Not the case here. James Marsters is just a wet narrator. <laughs> he just needs to drink more water or they need to take more breaks or they need to have some kind of like spittoon where he can like clear his mouth and read more clearly and consciously without feeling like you're swimming through the story at times. And it does get distracting. It does. I, you're consciously aware of it. You're consciously aware of him gulping and swallowing. And it's a lot. It's, it's not a great sound. But there's a warmth to it that is still appreciated. He is a phenomenal, phenomenal narrator. Um, however... There's a lot of times where they leave almost outtakes in. I'm not really sure how they read an audiobook. Um, I assume it's not a page where because he's reading seamlessly. So I'm assuming he's not like flipping a page. It's probably on a screen and it's like follow the bouncing ball or something. And he's just reading through the entire thing. There are times that he will mispronunciate words. There will be times that he says something and almost sort of corrects himself or I don't want to say stutters because that's not the right word. But you know when you're reading out loud, sometimes you're reading something and you'll read the word incorrectly and you'll kind of correct yourself. He does that. He also makes jokes about the content he's reading. And none of this is edited out and it blows my mind. I don't know who was responsible for editing this audiobook, but they did a lousy job. There's a part in the story where I kid you not, he's talking about swallowing something. I don't remember if it was, I don't remember the context and I just remember what he said afterwards. And he goes, you have to choose whether you want to spit or swallow. And I'll talk about the, the con, I'll talk about the writing style in a minute, but he says something along those lines. Okay, I got it. We're all tongue in cheek. Oh, spit and swaddle, swaddle, uh, you know, clearly a sexual innuendo, right? And he says, and you could hear him say it like off camera or off microphone. So he's like talking into the microphone. It's loud. It's clear. And then he does one of these. He's like, hey, you better not say that. You better not put that in the book. And it was like, what? 
it was very, very odd. It was very clear he was making a comment to the producer or the guy behind the booth or whatever, but not about the story. And then even when you get to the sections where you have to insert a new CD, no, I'm listening to it on a, on, on a podcast where it's like a 10 hour file, right? But when you get to the point where it's like, it'll say, please insert CD three or put whatever it is, right? It's not even at a logical break. He'll be mid sentence. He'll be like, and then I opened the door and I saw, please insert CD three. And it just totally takes you out of it. It's not a logical break. So if you did own the CDs, and clearly they just ripped these things, they did no editing after the fact to make it an audiobook. But if you did own the CDs, you they didn't even do a good job of editing it. Like it didn't end at like a, a logical break, a paragraph break, a chapter break, uh, something. It's just whenever they felt like it, like okay, we got thirty minutes of tape, and at the thirty minute mark, pff, new CD. The production quality is horrendous. It's horrendous. And it's, I know people say, oh, well, you know, it gets better. It better, gotta get, oh, oh. All right, so production aside, let's talk story, okay? Um, the story was not good. It, it had moments of greatness. It really, really did. The idea that there are werewolves in this universe is awesome. The fact that there are different types of werewolves is awesome. And that there's these wars between the various types. And I'm not talking about like, oh, the werewolves from Jones Street fighting the werewolves on Elm Street. I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about is how people get their well werewolviness, <laughs> their powers, right? Each of them has a different um, storyline. And, and additionally, you'll meet characters who are very clearly werewolves turned humans, not humans turned werewolves, which is awesome. So there's definitely, Jim Butcher definitely has some phenomenal ideas here. I know this book was written in, in college and it was rushed and the story gets better, the story gets better. This was definitely the weaker of the two books. A lot of the jokes that Harry Dresden makes don't really fit thematically with what's going on in the world. There needs to be times where he is not just a one-off shyster or a comedian. And I wish that the character would just reflect more on the world in moments rather than always try to find a witty thing to say back. And that happens a lot. It happens a lot where I'm taken out of the story and I'm thinking to myself, no one would ever think this. And I'm like almost criticizing the way he's thinking. Now at times when, when it works, and there's a lot of points in this book where I was like on the edge of my seat, I wanted to hear more. I had to listen to one more chapter, five more minutes. I need to know what's going on. There's some really good stuff in there. But there's a lot of stuff in there that made me reflect and say, okay, clearly Jim uh, Butcher is not yet a good author. He's not, he hasn't yet learned to convey and tell a story and, and it doesn't have to be, every, does, everything doesn't have to be joking. There can be serious moments. There could be somber moments. There could be self-reflective moments. There could be more pause for the character. It doesn't have to be nonstop action. This book reads like a B action movie, how fast things occur, where in one night, um, the main character gets bitten and stabbed and shot and uh turns into a werewolf and fights off another werewolf and turns back into a human and it's like oh my god no way this dude is it's exhausting hearing how much this guy is doing oh he hooks up with a girl all this in one night like get out of here dude um so there's some weird um th there's some weird elements in there but i i see i can see why people uh, love this series because we are reunited with fan favorite characters. There is a deeper dive of Harry Dresden's relationship with his coworkers and with Bob and with some of his backstory with this white council and some of the things he did. And, and there is, I'm seeing it all come together, but it hasn't all come together. It's like watching the first season of The Mandalorian. The first season of The Mandalorian sucked. It wasn't good until the second season. And then it got really good. 
And I feel like we're inching towards that moment. I know I'm, I'm watching this in 2024, right? Or listening to this in 2024. I know these books have been out forever. I know that Jim Butcher is now a New York Times bestselling author. I think there's like 8,000 Dresden books. I don't know how many, like 13 or 14. People love them. And everybody has commonly said on the subreddit and other fans of the book, like Corey, who got me hooked on it, and other people who I've talked to who are fans of his work, they all say, don't even really start with book one or two. Start with book three or four, and then go back and read the first as like, almost like a Raiders of the Lost Ark like prequel if you want to know more about it. And honestly, after getting through the second book, despite my incredibly high highs, there were so many lows. I can't recommend this. I don't think it was a good book. It doesn't really push the plot of Harry Dresden in a good direction. But if there are reoccurring characters, if some of these wolves that he met help him in later adventures, it's nice to know their backstory. But I don't feel like it really pushed the story. I don't feel any more connected to the characters. I don't feel any more connected to this world. But because of the great highs in this, I am going to continue on to book three. I am going to be taking a break. I'm pivoting to something else. I'll talk about that when I'm done with it. And then I'll start on book three. So my next audiobook review will not be Dresden book three. It will be something else. But we'll revisit this series in a while. I need to take a little break and go do something else and then come back. Um, but I'm curious for those of you who have read Stormfront, uh, what your thoughts on it were. Um, just from my perspective, far too many technical, far too many um, story holes to recommend. I, I don't think this was a value. I don't think this was a great watch or listen or read or whatever. Um, but I want to hear from you guys in the comments below. That'll wrap up today's, well, not today. It's going to be a while, like I said, <laughs> this installment of my audiobook review. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care of yourselves. And until next time, I will see you guys on the other side. Bye-bye.